do. It's going to be no string. I think I called it contact. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore this syntax right now. But uh, basically, it just means from outside that method, we can easily set the name, get the name. So uh, basically, we can go back to the main page. And we set name and contact number to whatever is in people.cs. We haven't done that yet. One thing we have to do. Is we have to go to main page .xaml.cs, which is the behind the scenes for the um, the XAML page. So we're going to ignore this. I'm going to press CTRL MH, I believe. No, nope, that doesn't seem to want to work. So I'm just going to minimize that using this. So we're going to ignore this line, and we're going to write our own code here. So what we want to do is we want to make a list. Um, what we want the list to be is we want the list to be of people. And the way it knows that I want the list of people is because we made a class over here. And that class has properties, so it knows that we're going to make a list of people. And I'm going to call it people list. And we're going to make it we're going to make it a new list of people. And we're going to open and close parentheses to represent that we're making a new instance of the class called list. Okay, so this means that only people can be placed in this list. Nothing else can be placed in this list. Okay, so what we're going to do is just to show you how this is going to work, I'm going to put people list dot add new people and we're going to use a curly brace and we're going to type name equals John we're going to use a comma to separate the arguments we're going to write contact number equals uh, 0154935665544 okay and we're going to close that and we're going to close that. So basically what we've done there is we've made a new list of people. We've called a people list. And we've made a new instance of the list itself. So that means we can use all the functions and the members of the list class, which consists of a add function, which allows us to add a new person, people here, Making a new person whose name is John, set the name property in people.cs over here. The job which sets the name property over here to John. And the contact number to 0145 Okay. So if we ran that now, we'd have a big fat error. And the reason is that we need to actually tell the XAML that we want the name John, the contact number 01453566544 to be displayed on the screen. And we want it to be bound, data bound, to the XAML list box itself. So we called it a list. We called it the people list. No, we didn't. What do we call it? So it's called, yeah, it's called the people list. And I'm going to change the version. I'm going to call it people list box. So we have no conflicts. People list box. Not. Dot uh, item source. Equals people list. So basically, this is what tells the list to display the item. So, make a list, we add the people to the list, and we make a new, people, we make a new uh, person named John, his contact number. Um, the item source for the list we've made in main page.xaml 
here uh, will be fed that person. Okay, so uh, and because the people list um, because the person has a name, John, the binding of the name, that top text box which you see before the big bold one will be called John. And because that person, that one member of the list has a contact number of that number, it will say people.cs contact number that. And that will be bound to this text box. So I'm going to click debug. Okay, um, there we go. And you'll see at the bottom it's going to deploy some seed and see hopefully this will work. Pretty sure it's going to be. There we go. You see it there. It says jump. Okay, so that's just a very quick example of it. Um, basically, that's a very simple method of doing this. Um, just to help you know how it works a bit easier, what I'm going to do is to these text blocks and get out a line which separates each name. So you don't really need to know what I'm writing now, just know that it's going to separate them. Maybe a line uh, height equals three stroke equals this on black strokes so it sounds out so thickness. We're going to have, uh, let's see, two, the uh, next one equals zero, next two equals the discussion of four, which is with the screen. Four, uh, one equals five, and two. Okay, so, oh, not bad. Okay, so that's going to add a line if we want to. It's going to put all of the skin showing. So, what this is doing is actually for simplicity, I'm just going to add another person here. Just to show you that after every person, I'll have a dual line separated. Okay, this might work, but it might not, because I'm sure it's supposed to set a line. So, we're going to have a simple. And his contact number is going to be totally different. What about the same one? I'm sure that's the same. Okay. I'm going to that again. And you'll see why I succeeded, and it's going to do all this again for me. Okay, so hopefully, I'm going to put it in this folder. Ah, no, not yet. By the way, as you see, ignore the line for now, but, you know, we can still got our two entries here. We've got our two entries. John, we've got Bob, but we've got both the contact numbers for each. And that's great. That is great. Because we've added a new person to the list. His name is Bob, so his name is going to be bound. That is our one. So that's the contact number. And people list box. So that's the people list. So we want two people in that list. So that means it's got to make two different names, two different contact numbers, lay them both out for an example. So that's how that works. So now that's all we really want to do. Okay. And we're going to now build the images page, which is this page with these boxes here, the uh, little image boxes. Written by people. 